What is going on, good people of YouTube? It is me, Chavez, back with another Prize Picks video for Monday, January 30th, 2023. We have an eight game NBA slate ahead of us. So far, Prize Picks has only dropped a few plays on the board. I expect them to drop a bit more within the next hour or so. But right now, we have Spurs, Wizards, Kings, and Timberwolves. So even with the limited board, I was able to identify three players, some positive game environments that I wanted to share with you all. Just as a starting point for our research, by no means are we looking to lock anybody in at this time. Unless you feel someone's prop is gonna get bumped up within the next few hours and you wanna lock them in. But price picks won't usually bump any lines until the next day. So. With that being said, let's dig into these three dudes that you see on the screen right here. I have a few notes to share with you as well from a few other games, uh, but I really wanna focus on this uh, Washington and San Antonio game and then the Minnesota Timberwolves versus the Sacramento Kings. So starting off in Washington, Washington will be uh, taking on the Spurs and honestly, both teams play pretty bad defense and they're ranked pretty um they're pretty low in the rankings in terms of defending all the things so if we head on over to lineups.com and check out defensive rankings you can see that san antonio is dead last in the league at points allowed at assists allowed field goals made for field goal percentage three point percentage uh man they are really really bad at a lot of things this season and then if we check out the washington wizards on the other hand kind of middle of the road in all the things but you can score on them you can you can exploit them for sure they don't have any they don't have any elite defenders even though chris stapps for is available for tomorrow's game i'm sure he'll be on a minute's limit so i don't think he will be a big factor tomorrow or he might be, but um, ankles, ankle injuries are real hard to like come back from and just be 100% right off the bat. So they might just ease him back in. I mean, unless the Spurs are just gonna exploit their their soft front court defense, they might need him to play more minutes. I don't know, but I wanted to pull these numbers up for you so you can see that uh, both teams, you know, really don't play defense all that well. We head on over to props.cash. We can uh, take a look a little bit deeper at this Washington and San Antonio game because Kyle Kuzma has been, without a doubt, the best player on this Washington team this season. It's not even close. He's their best scorer. He does he does more with the ball right now than anybody on the uh, on the team and. His best ability right now is his availability because <laughs> he's pretty much healthy all the time, which is on that team, you know, that's just like gold. So over the last 10 games, he's giving you 24. Over the last 25 or over the last five, he's giving you 25 points. Uh, San Antonio, as you can see, green is not good in terms of uh, defensive stats. And pace of play, San Antonio plays at a pretty fast pace, the number eight in the league. Uh, per um, the number eight in the league in terms of their pace of play, averaging right around 103 um, per, uh, possessions per game, which is which is a lot, honestly. And then the Washington Wizards are ranked 17th in pace of play. I mean, it's not they're not slow, but they're just not as fast as um, as San Antonio right now. So I expect to be I expect this game to be a little faster pace, which opens up more shot opportunity for um for like your volume shooters on the uh, on the wizards and so i was looking at kuzma and beal because i mean the offense goes through them if porzingis is available and plays a big role tomorrow then that will take some of kuzma's usage away however beal is not listed on the uh prize picks board nor is he listed on props.cash right now so Unless I missed something, uh, he is not on the injury list. This does have Kristaps Porzingis out, but uh, DraftKings uh, reported that Kristaps will be available for tomorrow's game. 
So if Beal's out and, and Porzingis is in, then I don't think the usage decreases too much for Kuzma. Kind of just breaks even. But I do like Kuzma because he is a, he is one of the top scorers in the league, but he is a top scorer for Washington, averaging a little over 18 field goal attempts a game. But in the month of January, he's averaging 20 field goal attempts a game, 20 shots a game. And then Beal's right behind him with 16 per game. It's down a little bit because he's been injured and out for so many games. So those will be my two targets on this team. I already like Kuzma's points, but um, I don't really know what they'll prop Beal at or even if he'll be available tomorrow. But those guys are not even my favorite play from this game. My favorite play from this game is not even on the board, and it is Jeremy Sohan. So right now, Kelvin, Kelvin Johnson and Jacopo, uh, Jacopo are the only two Spurs on the board right now. But I'm waiting on Jeremy Sohan because uh, he is he is having a, a really, really good season. And he's a rookie, still super young. But over the last 10 games, he is averaging roughly 26 minutes per game. And he has hit, well, excuse me, in the last eight games, eight out of 10 games, he has hit double digit points in those games and on the season he's averaging 26 minutes a game if we check out his game log on espn you can see 26 minutes on the season um but over the last 10 games averaging roughly 30 minutes his points are up over the last 10 games from a season average his minutes are up his rebounds are up his assists are up uh, the only things that aren't up are his blocks so Personal fouls are down a little bit. He's turning the ball over a little bit more, which tells you that he's handling the ball a little bit more. The ball's in his hands. He's getting more usage. Turnovers are up. When turnovers will go up, the more you are involved in the offense and, and shooting and handling the ball, facilitating and things like that. So that's okay. It only went up by one. So very interested in Jeremy Sohan's lines when they drop. So that's about it from the Washington-San Antonio game. Two plays I like out that Minnesota game, D'Angelo Russell over on points, and then Gobert over on points and rebounds. I like his rebounds more than points and rebounds, but because he rebounds at such a high rate, and over the last few games, he has been scoring. He hasn't been leading his team in scoring, but when you head on over to the Minnesota sack game and check out Rudy, Go, Rudy Gobert, <laughs> Mr. Gobert, um... 13, 7, 17, and 15. Like, he's scoring. He He's not hitting his prop every night, but, I mean, he's scoring. 10 over the last 5, 12 over the last 10. But he's also, in terms of rebounds, giving you uh, 12 over the last 10 and 11 over the last 5. So if he's giving you, you know, 15 points and 11 rebounds, I mean, that's, that's what he needs to hit his rebounds and points prop. It's a little risky, though, because you don't really know how much he'll be involved in the offense. But the last time these two teams played, he gave you 27 points and rebounds. He's done it, and it was recent. It was this past Saturday. So, you know, he's capable for sure. But uh, if I had to choose just one of his props, it would definitely be over on his rebounds versus rebounds and assists. He's done this in four straight games. So D'Angelo Russell, on the other hand, I mean, Price Picks refuses to increase his point line, and they refuse to increase his three-point line. His three-pointers are not up on Price Picks, but I assume they'll be set at two and a half, which is what they've been for almost a week. Same thing for his game points, 19 and a half points. This is just too low for him. He's hit this five out of the last ten games, but he's hit this in um, he's hit this in four out of his last six. He's playing against a defense. In Sacramento that is I mean they're okay they're not great but they play super fast so ninth ninth fastest team in the NBA and Minnesota is the seventh fastest team so you got two very fast teams playing so back and forth back and forth D'Angelo D'Angelo Russell should get plenty of shot opportunities should get heavy volume in that offense 19 and a half just feels a little too low for me so I want to take that for sure uh, but I won't lock it in until uh, tomorrow morning. And that's going to be it in terms of the plays that I've already identified, like where I want to start my research. 
One one game I want to keep my eye on for sure is the Los Angeles Brooklyn game. No LeBron, no AD. They've all already been ruled out. Simmons, I believe, will be out tomorrow. Huge blowout blowout potential here, blowout risk here. Um, and with those two superstars not being you know available for tomorrow's game, I wonder. I question if even Kyrie wants to play this game. I mean, Brooklyn should run away with this game for sure. Maybe Kyrie sits out. You already have Simmons out. So then minutes open up for players like Joe Harris and uh, Seth Curry. Uh, Yuta Wantanabe. I don't think I've seen a prop for him on prize picks. But I, I promise you if they drop a Yuta Wantanabe prop, I'm going to be all over it for sure. Nick Claxton is also of interest. When they drop his lines, we'll see where they sit and attack that fantasy score like we've been doing over the last few days. But yeah, that game is of interest to me because um, you are going to see a lot of usage spread out across the floor for the Lakers. Ruby Hachimura probably slides into the starting lineup. We get to see what he does in the Lakers uniform, like in a starter's role. So that's pretty cool. Toronto Phoenix also has my attention mainly for CP3, who torched this team back on December 30th. And that was with a healthy OG Ananobi. It's possible that OG Ananobi does not play in this game. He's currently listed as questionable for the Toronto Raptors, but I'm telling you, man, that wrist looked real bad when he when he fell, when he took that fall. That wrist looked like it was broken. So I don't expect him to play tomorrow. So without their best defender and CP3 already um, already torched this team for 20 points. And he put 37 PRA on him with their best defender on him. I like CP3 tomorrow, points, rebounds, assists, points, points, assists, and his three-pointers as well because their last meeting, he was 50% from behind the arc. He hit three out of six. In fact, that whole Phoenix team was lighting him up. 14 for 30 from behind the arc, 47% made. That's a lot of three-pointers that Toronto gave up. So looking forward to seeing where those props drop and have some interest in, uh, in CP3. But... That is going to do it, ladies and gentlemen. That is our first look into tomorrow's slate, Monday, January 30th. Eight games to go, uh, eight games to look into. So right now, identified a few uh, positive game environments for Kuzma, D'Angelo Russell, Rudy Gobert, Jeremy Sohan is a mention as well. And then we have a lot of role players that might get big minutes tomorrow due to um, injuries and, and unavailability of superstars. So... Thank you so much for stopping by the channel and checking this video out. Truly appreciate the time you've taken to just chill out with me and talk basketball props. Do me a favor and leave a comment below with your favorite player prop on the board if there is one or who you have your eye on for tomorrow's slate. Also, let me know what you think about my early look and observations. Do you like them? Do you hate them? Do you love them? Do you want to leave them? Either way, let me know. I'd love to hear what you have to say in the comments. Thank you once again for hanging out with me. And until the next video... Chavez is out.